All right, let's talk about Jalen Polk. So the New England Patriots drafted him early on in the second round. He was actually projected to be more of a late second round guy. So by the projections, this was a bit of a reach. But at the same time, watching his film, I totally get why the Patriots wanted this guy. And I'm not really going to crush it too much or anything like that. For one thing, wide receiver, kind of a notoriously difficult position to evaluate. So if you like a guy, you can kind of just go ahead and get him. But also... He just fills a role that this Patriots offense does not have. And let's talk about what that is, starting off with this play. So this is going to be not exactly the main thing we're going to talk about, but kind of the main thing we're going to talk about. So it's going to be zone coverage, and uh, Polk's route is going to be one more of a deeper route over the middle. Watch how when this play begins, you see that uh, Michael Penix is going to take the snap, fire one down the field, and right here you know, wide open. This isn't like, I know we didn't see much of the route, but it wasn't like his great route running is what got him so open. It was more so just the, the play call. Although he's still, you know, he, he has to run the route, right? He has to do it. But still, uh, the reason why I'm showing this play is not to show how open he got. One of the things I really like about Polk is his you know, extended catch radius. He is someone that, which could be really helpful for Drake May, can make a catch even if it's not in a perfect spot and can make the tough play. I mean, watch him go up and bake that catch, takes a hit, but holds on to it. And the fact that he can do this does make me wonder, okay, do the Patriots have an outside receiver, which they have been desperately looking for for a long time? Someone who can, you know, win on deep routes down the field. Something like this, for example, which is, you know, I think they... Uh, got you know, Tyquan Thornton uh, a couple years ago with the intention of him being able to win in these situations. Devonta Parker, another guy they thought could maybe win in these situations uh, and did it on occasion, but wasn't great at it. Now they're drafting Polk to, I think, win on one-on-one -on -one matchups to go out on the outside. They're going for a touchdown here at their opponent's 26-yard line. Let's see what happens. So Penix takes a snap, and you see that Jalen Polk on this one is going to run towards the outside, and you see him just, ex you know, he's explosive enough. He could just run by that Oregon defensive back. So this is really good. Now, I think it's fair to sometimes question when sometimes your go routes are just running by the corner. How repeatable is that once you get to the NFL? Corners are just so much better. A lot of times you need more than just, you know, being able to run by guys, you know, speed only can get you so far, but it certainly is a a good first, uh, you know, first thing that he has. Also, you got to make the catch, though. Can he do that? Well, and this one absolutely is able to go out and make the play, so really good stuff there by Polk on that one. So, yeah, that was very good. Also, this one, which is going to be more of a creative type play where he's not uh, going to kind of fake as though he's going over the middle and then get towards the outside, but still kind of the same idea, trying to win in a one-on-one -on -one situation. When this play begins, again, you're going to see him being just sort of explosive enough to run by the defensive player trying to cover him. The fake does work. There is a window. So, again, going to have to be able to track the ball and make the grab, which is certainly not easy. However, he is able to do that and gets to this point, which this is another thing he certainly has to his game that Patriots players just certainly did not is let's be honest how many times when watching Patriots film last year did we see someone have a defensive back running over trying to make a tackle and then make the tackle right not a ton of broken tackles with the New England Patriots receivers they're just there weren't however here you do see him be able to somehow get around that does great work in open space doesn't quite get the touchdown on this one but comes very close and it does a really good job so again Another added benefit to the table, I do think that they're, I think the reason they're drafting him is they hope he can be this guy. They hope he can be a great outside threat. And there's definitely plenty of reasons to believe that that might be what he can do. There's also stuff like this, which is once again going to be the one-on-one -on -one matchup down the field. But a lot of times what I've showed is, okay, he can run by guys. Well, what if he can't? What if he doesn't get by someone? What if a corner's you know, playing good defense? Something like this, where when this play begins, Penix is going to say, hey, let me throw it up. I like this matchup. Let's give Polk a chance. This time, though, it is not quite working out the way the other ones were, right? There is not a ton of separation. So how are you going to be able to make the grab? Well, it's a 50-50 ball, but as I showed you with that first play, 50-50 does not mean your receiver only has a 50% chance to make the grab if that receiver is Jalen Polk. Watch him again, go up, make the grab, pick up that huge completion right there. It's, it's, it's really good stuff by Polk to be able to pull this kind of thing off. So this stuff is very good, and Washington would use it. This play, which you might be saying, wait, which one is Jalen Polk on this play? Well, 
he's up there. So he's off screen. I guess not exactly where that arrow's pointing. The arrow's pointing more towards the defensive back. But you get what I'm saying. He's uh, above the, you know, up off screen right now. But watch what happens. So Penix is going to take the snap, and he's just going to throw it off screen to Jalen Polk, who, again, it's not a ton of separation, which you can't really blame him for. I mean, uh, he's doing what he can to get the separation. It's just The play just started. This is that goal line fade situation, which so many teams like to run. But again, for the Patriots, who has really been consistently good at this in the past few years? You know, uh, they used to have rece- like they used to have Rob, Rob Gronkowski run out and do that pretty frequently. But here, what do you do? Well, Polk is the one who makes the grab, and I think that the Patriots are hoping that they can get some Drake May to Jalen Polk connections going. Uh, and I certainly can see it because that's you know really good job by uh, you know by Polk on that one. I mean, again, being able to you know have the body control, make the grab even with the contact there, really not easy to do, but he can pull it off. I think we can make the argument of like, okay, Werder, you know, was he your favorite day two wide receiver and all of that stuff? And, and we can have that discussion. And if I sit down and really, you know, think hard about it, it's possible I could find someone I like more or something like that. But he's what they want in an offense. And again, things are different when you have a young quarterback. I, I think that while you could look at him and say, oh, he was a slight reach on the consensus big board, usually a mistake. But when you're trying to develop a young quarterback, Drafting a safety in round two doesn't help you that much. It just doesn't. You need to develop the young quarterback, especially a team like the Patriots that had a real need for wide receiver help. And so to me, it's pretty much always going to be the right. I I don't think you can, within reason, I don't think you can overspend on wide receivers when you have a young quarterback that you're trying to develop. It's it's the whole, I'll probably make this comparison a million times uh, for the rest of my life, but it is the Christian Kirk contract philosophy of the Jaguars, you know, coming off a year where Trevor Lawrence really struggled because he had no help around him. The Jaguars needed to get a receiver. Christian Kirk was kind of the top guy on the market, but he wasn't a top wide receiver or anything like that. The Jaguars still paid him a ton of money to come over and everyone said, wow, Jaguars pretty stupid, huh? You know, that he's nowhere near that good. And then while he's maybe, you know, at times lived up to the contract and at times hasn't uh, for the Jaguars, that's still been a great contract because it's given Lawrence an option. It's helped develop Lawrence into being an actively good player. So for the Patriots, making sure you go out and get a good receiver is, in my opinion, worth it. And to be honest, watching his film, especially going back and doing this film study, I think he's worth that pick. Like I don't, I don't think this is the reach. I disagree with the consensus big board on this one, which is what you're allowed to do. You're allowed to have opinions of your own sometimes. Uh, and for me, this is one of my one of the times where I disagree with the consensus big board. I think he's very good. I think he's worth this pick, and I think it was a smart job by the Patriots to do it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, Thanks for watching.